Hi, everyone. Sorry, I had to adjust my hair there for a minute. Uh, my name is Dr. Effie Hapsha, and I welcome you to today's webinar with Kathleen McCrossy on nourishing your relationships uh, post-COVID. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about um, women in dentistry um, and about myself and my connection to women in dentistry. So I'm the founder of Women in Dentistry, which is a group that was founded 10 years ago. Um, with the mission of engaging, connect, connecting, and networking with women in the dental field. Now, this doesn't only include dentists. It's including dentists, dental specialists, hygienists, our assistants, our admin team, because we all know that we all work together as a team to provide the best patient experience. So I'm really thrilled to have you, the hygienist, available and, and watching our webinar today. Um, it really is fantastic. Um, Women in Dentistry, as I said, was founded 10 years ago, and you can find us online at womensdentistry.com. And since the beginning of the pandemic, we have really um, adapted to the new normal, and we've launched into this live webinar format of disseminating information. So our first webinar was back in March, and we've held one ever, every week ever since then, and today we're thrilled to have Kathleen with us today. And so if you look on the website, you can, if you want to join the Women in Dentistry community, there's a little blue button on the side of your screen here that says subscribe. So feel free to click on that. You can also find us on social media. So I would encourage you guys to go on your phones. Uh, you're allowed to do that right now, the only time during this webinar. Um, and just follow us and like us on Instagram and on Facebook at Women's Dentistry. We constantly disseminate information on these sites and it's a great way for us to stay connected. And so without further ado, I'd like to um, introduce Kathleen. But before I do that, I just wanted to go through a few housekeeping items with this webinar. This webinar is recorded as, in fact, a webinar format, which means that your microphones as well as your video have been turned off. There is, however, a Q&A button in the bottom of your screen, or it could be on top, where you could feel free to submit questions that I will ask of Kathleen at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Kathleen to today's program, and I'll just tell you a little bit about Kathleen. Um, Kathleen's been bringing engaging energy to the dental profession for over 30 years. As you all know, Kathleen is the president of RDHU, which is a professional development company which provides team events, hands-on education, and online learning. She is a publisher for Dental Hygiene Quarterly and is on the Speakers Bureau for Procter & Gamble, Crescent Oral B, and a KOL for Bisco Canada and Ivo Clarby of Adent. She's written many articles for dental publications and lectures both nationally and internationally. So I'd like to welcome you, Kathleen, to today's webinar. I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll wait for Kathleen to join on. And she's got a really great program for us today. So we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. My, um, my video won't turn on. It has to, okay. I need to. Let me turn, I, I can turn off and I will see you guys at the end of the session and we'll get Kathleen up and running. Kathleen, so you're looking great. We can see the video and you'll just, just get see in. me now. <laughs> yeah, we can see you and Perfect. you can just get into the presenters mode and we'll just jump right into the Perfect. presentation today. Awesome. All right. Is am, am I in presenter mode? Um, my screen is stuck. Let's ask IT here. <laughs> um, so it is stuck. So if you want to stop sharing, Kathleen, and just restart okay. the share. All right. You're looking good, good Kathleen. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's always the initial Perfect. part, right? All the IT stuff. So thank you, Min, for helping us out here this morning. I am really excited to be here uh, to present on this topic about nourishing relationships during this, during this time. So just before we get started, I wanted to ask you, um, that we have the poll questions. Let me see if I can do this. And if I can't, then we're just going to, I'm just going to ask you, there we go. And so if you can answer these, these are anonymous. So 
How many of you have been actively engaging and communicating with your patients during this time? All right, and how many of you recognize the importance of educating your patients on the oral systemic link during this time? All right, so if you wanna answer those, and then at the end, I guess we're going to just share how many of us are doing that. I know things have changed a little bit since, um, since we originally did this because um, at the time, nobody was really connecting with their, with their patients, with their teams, but we're seeing a lot of people. I think at the beginning, we were all in a bit of shock as to what was happening. But, um, but yeah, just, just before I get started, I just wanted to thank you for, for being here. I'm honored that you would spend the hour here with us. And also thank you to Dr. Hapsha and Min um, for helping us with the, with the IT and, and, and Dr. Hapsha for inviting me to speak with the women in dentistry. I'm looking forward to doing more collaborative events with you. So that's going to be something that we're going to be excited to share um, in the near future. So just before we get started, I just wanted to tell you or to share with you that we're going to um, learn the importance on working on ourselves during this time um, so that we can change our mindset to have a positive mindset and that we can come out as strong leaders. Uh, we're going to discover strategies on how you can engage with your team. And then what I've done is I've created a PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to give you after this. Um, instead of me going through this and saying you should do a PowerPoint presentation with your patients and with your clients, um, I actually created it for you. So it's a really nice presentation. Um, I'll let you know when it's starting and when it's ending. And that will be the presentation that I'll send you at the end, okay? Um, so really, I started this whole journey about nourishing relationships um, back, I would say, in 2000 and 2011 when I was introduced to this marketing group um, I love marketing and they really had us think about the before experience so before um, someone's your client or someone's your patient the during experience and how that looks from the moment that they come in and they're with you and what what that looks like from the moment you say hello to how they're um, how they're um, greeted by the receptionist, hopefully not the rejectionist, um, how we interact with them, how we educate them, how we make it about them. So that's all the during, we really wanna wow them. And then the after experience, it doesn't end when the patient leaves your operatory, okay? The after experience continues on until they come and see you again. So really we're in that phase right now. We are in the nourishing relationship phase right now, okay? So our messaging has to change. We have to connect with our patients. We shouldn't be looking for new patients at this time, which I'm sure most of you aren't. Although I just got a postcard last week from a from a dental office in Burlington and it was the same postcard that they had sent out a year ago it was all about free whitening and um, you know insurance you know third-party billing and all that and I just thought wow like we are never gonna go back to the norm the norm is 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 past pre-covid is in the past okay so we have a new norm and everyone's talking about it um, I think we embrace it Okay, I think I see this as a change for us. This is when we're going to get dental hygiene on the map. This is a time where people are really taking care of themselves. Uh, before it was all about me, you see on the Instagram, me, look how great I am, look how successful I am. But now it's more about what do we have? What do we, what do we have? What do we need, right? And it's more about taking care of, taking care of ourselves. And so it's all about taking care of your body, your mind, um, and your spirit. Um, so, so that's what this is all about now. So for, for us to take care of our oral health, this is now the ownership of our patients. And that's a message. This is an exciting time for us to really change their, uh, perception to what a dental hygiene appointment is. It's no longer about a cleaning, okay? It's going to be totally different. It's going to be a medical appointment. So if we can sort of start to change that mindset, not hang on to how it was, but really look at what it can be. So just a little bit about, about myself before we get started. Um, 
I am a dental hygienist. I have always had an entrepreneurial uh, spirit in me. I've started a few different companies. I had a dental instrument company. I started that in 1998. It was called D Sharp Dental Instruments and we were a North American company. Um, I ended up selling it to the manufacturing company in 2011 and stayed with them for a few, few years, but then decided to move on. Um, and I started RDHU because when I had D Sharp, it was all about um, putting better instruments in the client's hands or in the, in the, in the dental hygienist's hands. So I was teaching, you know, sharpening, I was teaching instrumentation and I kept hearing from people, can you do more of this? Like it's more practical information when we can take what we learn and apply it to our practice on Monday morning. And so that's really how RDHU got started. And so we are really about a hands-on experience and about taking that knowledge and taking it into practice. So we've done a huge pivot on our business too. We had events planned across the country. Um, you know, we had all these courses planned at RDHU and, you know, I have a great team and we just pivoted and we recreated ourselves. And I've had to recreate myself many times or myself many times. Um, I started, a, uh, we were the first ones to have Scrubs Couture. It was the most beautiful clothing line. I sold that line as well. Um, and we do a show called the RDHU where we offer, it's a, it's a one hour um, free CE in, a, in the in the platform of a talk show and it's it's pretty inspiring and a lot of fun i know a lot of you are already rdhu members here but um you know we invite you to join us and then we have the qa coach and that's for dental hygienists in ontario and we coach you through the quality assurance program now um, for me before this all started i am um, actually where i'm sitting right now this is my bedroom where i have been isolated for seven months. <laughs> I actually broke my leg. Um, I broke my, my leg in many places and I shattered my ankle and I dislocated my foot. So my foot was facing the other direction. And that was the Sunday morning of Thanksgiving um, up at our cottage. So I slid down the ramp, they lower the water and you know, that was it and we we're water access. So off to, you know, emerge we go in Huntsville and I had to come back to Burlington, have surgery. I was bedridden for three months. So all my crying and everything that I sit, found a lot of people going through that when COVID hit, I had already gone through all that. So I think it made me stronger to, to look at this and to see this not as a positive because this isn't great what we're going through no doubt but there's always something positive that you can find in, in any negative okay so um so i'm pretty passionate about this topic i'm excited to share it with you and um and if you have any questions please feel free to um to enter them in and then dr hapshire is going to share them at the end but also um you can always reach out to me afterwards okay um so this is a, an amazing program that I just wanted to briefly share with you. And this is something that we've been really busy with right now. Talk about pivoting. Um, Chris and Roby have stepped in with us and we are offering free um, CE. So it's been a wonderful experience. We have almost 2000 people on it. We were going to cap it at 1000, but then it just took off within a few days. And before you knew it, we almost had 2000. So we put a pause on it. So um, really, we're, we're giving you a couple of our um, um, uh, sessions, like there's a, or the seasons, there's the dental hygiene quarterly for summer and fall, but we're recording them now and a lot of them are live. So you can join us live on there and it's about $354 worth of, um, of programs that we're doing. So it's a relief program for us to be able to give back to you. And so this is the website here that you can opt in. You can go to, and I'll send a follow-up email afterwards, but that really is um, right now there's a waiting list, but once we have that, that number, then we're going to uh, launch Relief 2.0. Okay, so a quick drink here. So this is something I wanted to really, sometimes we kind of get into the rut of things and our days become the same. And you know, sometimes you wake up and you're like, what day is it, right? So, um, so we really encourage our members to do something different from the Monday to Friday. Um, even if we're not working, work on yourself, work on your professional development, um, connect with your teens, 
uh, makes Saturday and Sunday different. So you can differentiate those, those two other days. But every day, do a self-assessment, okay? So you're gonna rate yourself from one to 10, 10 being the highest. How do you rate yourself? And the thing is with this is that if you're feeling low, you're feeling down, um, you think about what can you do to change it up? You know, you can change up your, your mood, you can change your mindset just by either calling somebody, perhaps you have a mentor that you connect with, could be a positive um, podcast that you listen to, it could be positive affirmations, perhaps you print them off, you just read them, it could be your power stance that you do. There's so much we can do to change that mindset. So try to get out of it as quickly as you can. Don't let it control your day. The next thing is, I see a lot of disconnect. There's a lot of disconnect within us, within our offices. Um, I see it on Facebook and the dental hygiene groups, all the chatter that's going on. I see it from uh, some of my colleagues who are in the dental field and they ask me, you know, you know, it's not looking good for hygiene and it's, and it's like, what's going on? We have to work together as a team, okay? Now's not the time to disconnect. Now's the time that we should connect. Over 70% of employees aren't engaged in their work. This is a study that I found. And it made me wonder, what is this going to look like after COVID-19 if we've all disengaged from each other? That's not gonna be good. So I wanna share with you some strategies on how we can stay engaged, okay? How do we stay engaged with our profession, right? And with yourself, you want to learn new things. We all know that the more you learn, the happier you are, the more, the more satisfied you feel. When you're learning things, it kicks off the dopamine in your brain. When you've actually completed something, it sets it off even more. So learning something new is so important, especially while we're home being um, isolated. The next thing is, I want you to think about reclaiming your strengths during this time. Really reevaluate where are you at? Are you happy with where, where you're at? Um, remember why you got into this profession. Why did you choose dentistry? Why did you choose dental hygiene? Why did you choose dental? And, and really think about what were your dreams? What were you hoping to accomplish? And I know, because I speak to many dental hygienists every day, that sometimes we get knocked down. And from the things that we really loved have, have been taken away from us or we've let somebody take it away from us, right? So we often conform in the practice that we're working at, right? So now's the time to really think about what can I do to reclaim my strengths? Another way to stay engaged is to express gratitude. So if you are an employer, there's nothing better than you expressing gra gratitude to your team, okay? And for those of you who perhaps bosses aren't expressing gratitude, express it with each other, okay? That's gonna make you feel really good. It's gonna help you get engaged. Um, and it's the best thing, it's expressing gratitude. Even I started, I started to do this at night again. And even this morning, I found three things that I was already grateful for that started my day. And just, it, it's like living in the, in, the, in the present and really focusing on the good. And what are you grateful for? So here, recognize your value, know your worth. And, you know, this is the opportunity that you can share your expertise, okay? So what sort of things did you want to bring into your practice? What sort of things were you um, hoping to implement? So now is a time when you can really shine, learn some new protocols, implement new, new protocols, and see what can you add when you get back to your practice. Shake up the status quo. So if you're falling into the rut every day, now's the time to change it up a bit. Look at some new things that you can learn. Um, look at some ways you can stay engaged with your patients. Look at some ways you can stay engaged with your, with your team. But it's time to get out of, out of the status quo and shake things up a bit. Be kind. <laughs> this one is so important. I see so much, again, I've been trying to stay away from Facebook and stuff because it's kind of scary even when you put yourself out there how some people are just ready to jump on that. And you wonder, would you actually treat somebody like that if you were face to face? I don't think you would. Um, and realize that everybody sees things differently, okay? We all see things in our own way. So you have to be very cognizant of this. 
um, and be very aware that we are all different. And your marketing message to your patients will no longer be the same. It will change. And we have to show empathy. We have to show that we care. And it's all about safety and preservation now, okay? Um, so it's all about sharing um, and, and understanding the worries of our patients and of our clients and having, and having a plan for them so that you're easing their worries. So you have to actually put yourself in their shoes and see, see your practice through your client's eyes, okay? So what's important to them? What's important to you is probably not what's important to them. Okay, so I always say to go through that exercise and um, pretend that you are your patient and how are you feeling? Write it down. What are you going through? What are you afraid of? Um, what's, what questions are you going to ask as a patient, right? What's going to make me feel better? And you, you as the um, clinician, you want to know, you want them to understand that you are there for them, that you understand their concerns. It's all about them. And so now is the time, right? Now is the time that we need to change, we need to pivot. Um, you know, when I look at how many different businesses have changed, you know, you look at those, you know, fancy um, restaurants that are now delivering date night gourmet foods. Um, look at the dancing um, schools, they're all doing Zoom dancing and, you know, but did everybody, did everybody change? No, there's a lot of people who closed their doors. They were like, I can't, this is not for me. But now it's not the time to do that. You don't want your patients to not hear from you. You want to, you want to be there for them. And like, even when I think about my um, physiotherapy, I was going three times a week for physio. And, um, and then there was weeks without, and then they said, we're now doing online. So it's interesting um, that, you know, you wouldn't think that physio could do it online because they had all the equipment there and it's all the massaging and everything, but it's working. Not everybody's going for it, but I'm going for it. And um, it's one of those things that you can't say, oh, well, you know, we're just closing our doors and, um, you know, the office down the street is going to take care of, of, of all the, of all the um, urgent care. No, now's the time that you connect. Now's the time there's so much that you can do with, with your patients. Um, and really, at the end of the day, you are essential. That's myself and um, that's Beth Parks, who um, is our educational director. And so that was one of the things that worried me at the very beginning was that, you know, they said only essential services are, are able to open and dental is not one of those. And when you think about what are we, what message are we sending our patients and our clients if we just disappear? You know, we've been educating them forever about the three month importance of their hygiene therapy visits, right? I shouldn't say forever because it's probably hasn't been that long, but we know more and more about the oral systemic connection. So when we're telling them that you have to come in every three months and all of a sudden it's okay, you're not going to see us maybe for another three or four months. Who knows when we're going to be back to being able to see our patients on a regular basis, right? So by hiding from them, um, closing our doors is showing that perhaps they aren't essential and that's not all right. They are essential. We are essential. Their hygiene is essential. You know, I look back at, um, we did this transformational contest um, with, our, with our members and we said, send us your most favorite transformational story of your, with your clients. And um, so just so you know, for some of you clients, we say clients and, and dentists say patients. So I go back and forth. But um, so we did this transformational um, uh, contest and we got so many really great things on how we've transformed people's lives as dental hygienists. And one of the stories was about this, um, this gentleman who came in. He hadn't been in to see the dentist or the hygienist in 20 years. He came in with his wife. He was super nervous, had the white knuckles going. Um, the dental hygienist did one quadrant therapy. He left. He came back for the second quadrant. She said his knuckles were a little bit less white. Tissue was healing nicely. Um, his wife said he was doing very well. 
And then he didn't make it to his third and fourth appointment. And they called him, um, he didn't get back to them. And then a few months later, he came back into the practice and he said, I'm so sorry that I wasn't here. He said, actually, from the last time that I saw you, I was in the hospital, I was hospitalized. And the dental hygienist was just like, oh my gosh, what's happened? And he said, actually, I was being over medicated for my diabetes because of my hygiene therapy. So when you see these things, you hear these things, we all know that it's pretty important what it is we do. And that makes me nervous to think of what is going on with our diabetic clients. What is going on with our, with our clients who have had heart surgery? What is going on with our pregnant clients, right? Or patients. So we need to make sure that we are helping them as best as we can for the situation that we're in right now. Now, some of the strategies I'm going to talk about, it's not gonna be financially rewarding. Um, but when you're there for your patients, when they are down, they are going to be there for you when you're open. So don't jump over the bills to get to the pennies, right? Um, you know, so, and also some of this is going to take it you as a team. A lot of people took this uh, webinar with me and they were all excited, but if you're not on it with it as, as a team, then these strategies might not work for you, okay? So I just want you to think about what can you give now that might not be the breadwinning solution, but it's going to be able to, for you to give back. And just for you, for, for dental hygienists, if you're employed by somebody, I know some of you have your own clinic as well, but if you're employed by somebody and you're on unemployment, it doesn't mean that you can't volunteer your time, right? And we hear all the time that when we're involved with the community, it's making us feel better. So just think about your investing in your future, okay? So what can you do to invest in your future to make sure that your patients and your clients are there for you for when you get back? And so this is really all about the wow factor because when you are connecting with your patients, you are going to wow them. All right, because it's not the norm. People don't tend to think of the after experience. This is all about the after experience right now. This is about you nourishing relationships, okay? So you are going to wow them and they are going to talk about it with their, with their friends and they're going to appreciate you so much, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a campaign, okay? This is a COVID-19 strategies campaign. All right, so we are going to educate them as much as we can. We're going to stay connected and we want to empower our patients to take control of their own oral health. And this is really going to be the time when we shift from just a cleaning to a medical appointment. Dental hygiene um, visits are never going to be just about a cleaning anymore. There's going to be a lot that goes into it that's going to make it a very medical appointment. So at first, I, when I first came up with all these um, strategies, I was thinking, you know, what could the dentist or dental hygienist do of the clinic um, to really help educate about the importance of, of IPAC? So lo and behold, there was this doctor who, I'm just going to show you, I won't keep it long because we don't want to be doing And as people bring groceries long. home from the stores, one West, West Michigan doctor is sharing the importance of disinfecting it. Yeah, something he says could save lives, or Angela McCall has a closer look at that message tonight. We have a dilemma in society that we need to eat to live, but we also need to get that food. And that getting of food is now risky. Do so this doctor did a video on how to prepare your home for your groceries. And now we're way beyond that. We're nine weeks in. Um, so, you know, at first I was saying, you know, show people how to collect it or how to accept a package, show them that, you know, IPAC's always been really important to, to you and this is what you do in your home and during this time. But now what I would recommend is you create a video of you um, walking through the steps that your practice has taken. So to show them, so it's, it's almost giving them the virtual tour of your practice even before they get there. So you can show them, because it's not just about you practicing or protecting your patients. This is about you protecting your staff, your team, and your patients, and your families. Okay, so when people see that you care about the whole team, it's not just about them, 
you wouldn't put your, your team at risk to come in and to practice if you were feeling like you're putting them in an unsafe environment. That's not going to happen. There's going to be a lot of changes that we're going to make with our air, with external suction, with all these different things that are going to help us practice. Perhaps you even dress up in your in your um, um, IPAC gear from head to toe. You can show them this is how you're going to see us when you come and see us next time. This is how we're dressed. This is everything we put into place. These are our high touch point areas. This is what we do. We put barriers here. You walk through your whole, your whole process to show them that their safety is the number one. Okay, that's the number one thing. And then their health is also so important. And then from there, we have a whole um, slide presentation on the oral systemic health. So this next one is you can invite them. It depends on if you can have them come in as an alias, because we have to wor worry about, about the Privacy Act, but you can invite them on one of your Zoom meetings, okay? Um, it just depends on how you can do that so that you're not having them um, feel that their um, that their name is out there, okay? But what can you do? You say we're having a meeting. We'd love for you to join us. Depending on what platform you use, we use Zoom in our in our business, but perhaps you use something else. Um, and here we're going to have our whole team there, so that you can um, you can be on here with us. And we have a very important message to share with you. And and so you can invite them, right? Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can always record it. And then you could send it to them and say, we recorded our, our um, meeting with you. We have this nice presentation. It's very, very important. And we really want you to watch it. So you can send it to them as well. You can just upload it on YouTube and send them the link. Okay. So whatever works for you. I know after I did this the first time, I had tons of offices say, thank you. We're now connecting with our teams. So before people weren't really connecting with their teams. And as everybody started getting more and more comfortable with these platforms, now people are connecting with your teams, right? Just checking in. How are you? How are things going? How are your kids? How are you feeling? You have to stay engaged with your teams. And now you invite your, your uh, patients um, to experience one of your uh, team meetings. And now, so the next slide is actually the slide presentation that I'm going to give you. All right, it's like da da da. Here we go. Okay, so this is where you would put your logo. And beside each slide, I have notes just to help prompt you. Okay, so um, this is where you put your logo. You just tell them how happy you are that they are there with you. Okay, so this this next little bit is just me um, showing you the slides that are included. And I, I don't want to. I could keep going here for another hour, so I'm just going to kind of go through them quickly. Um, but we, you could say like, we want you to know how important it is that you take care of your oral health. Uh, we can't stress it enough. Uh, we're really concerned about our patients. We're concerned about you. We want to make sure that you are okay. And then here you can just talk about what is it that you're doing for emergency care. Talk about your triage, talk about your teledentistry, whatever it is you're doing. This is how you connect them with this. This is what we're doing to help you in that emergency situation. Um, you know, we've all been told how important it is right now that our job right now is to stay out of hospitals, right? That is our job. We need to stay healthy. We need to walk. We need to get fresh air. We need to do fitness. We need to eat well. And we need to keep ca uh, care of our minds. And we need to really take care of our bodies and our, our mouths because our mouth and our body is all connected. So I just have some notes here that you could talk about that. And this is where you stress the importance of good oral hygiene. Our mouth isn't separate from our body. The mouth is a reflection of, of our whole body. And so um, that's, like, again, all the notes are here for you to, to look at. Um, I found just a couple of videos that, you know, these aren't my videos. I didn't create them. So you might have videos that you like. Maybe you already have them in your office that you can use. But I'll just show you. Here's one here of this um, periodontist in the States. And he has his Hi, microscope. I'm Dr. Joe Nemeth. I'm a periodontist in Southfield, Michigan. And I want to talk about five pathogens that we see in the mouth when people have periodontal five pathogens. So you can just see. percent of that we see in periodontal. It just shows us point. all the different then we start to pathogens see that are in the mouth. So you're just teaching them really a little bit about what's going on because the visual is so important. More serious. 
Hi, I'm Dr. And then the next one, this is a really good video, and I won't show it for too long, but I just want you to see, this one was by Listerine, and it's um, the whole body connection. In many ways, your mouth is the gatekeeper between the outside world and the rest of your body. Your mouth is teeming with billions of bacteria. There are more bacteria in your mouth right now than there are people on Earth. Over time, these bacteria can stick together and multiply. They form a colony, and the colonies can then join together, forming a thick layer called a plaque biome. This can eventually spread across every surface of your entire mouth. Your teeth, your gums, your cheeks, and your tongue. Every small space in your mouth provides the perfect environment for bacteria to thrive and for the plaque biofilm to grow, which it can do dramatically over the course of a single day. Your mouth's inflammatory cells... So, just so you can get the gist of that, it's a very good video and it shows somebody eating an apple and then the bacteria going in. So, it's just a really good visual, just so people can really... Um, really relate to what's going on. This is where you would have your message for your pregnant patients or for those, you know, for our patients who are thinking about getting pregnant, um, you know, now's the time that you really want to take care of your oral hygiene. Um, the next slide, you're just talking to your cardiovascular patients who we've, you know, shared that they have to be on every three months. Um, my husband had open heart surgery on his 50th birthday year and it was a big shock to us but the one thing that the cardio um the cardiologist shared with him is that you make sure that you see your dental hygienist every three months okay so it's what's happening right now is not okay that we're not seeing our patients the diabetic client like that story i told you about earlier we all know that diabetes you know it's a vicious cycle that aggravates cardiac disease which aggravates the diabetes so this is where you could educate your patients about that about diabetes and just something to think about you know if you've had alzheimer's in your family uh, there was a study done on 1600 brains from alzheimer's patients and 93.7 percent of them had oral spirochetes so even more important for them to take care of their mouths. And here, this is talking about, um, you know, the, all the notes here about how it's linked to cancer and, um, you know, that oral pathogens are found in remote parts of the body. So this is a PowerPoint that you're getting, okay? So this is what you're gonna have that you can share with your patients. Um, and this is really important, this one here on its oral pathogens and pneumonia. Um, during the COVID-19, think about all those um, patients who have periodontal disease and how much more um, high risk they were, are for having pneumonia if they contract the, the COVID virus. Um, and then you could just ask your patients, like if you had a bleeding finger and if you pushed on it every time, would you be worried if you had constant bleeding? Would this be okay, right? But no, it wouldn't be okay. And so, but why is it okay that we can brush and floss and spit blood, it, that's not okay. And these are um, images um, courtesy of Dr. Jim Highland from Oravital. We presented a couple of times together. Um, and then this picture here is just showing them all the different areas in their mouths that could hold uh, you know, the bacteria in the areas that they have to clean. And then here we have, there's 80%, over 80% of adults have some form of periodontal disease, all right? So then here, what, do we, what can we do? How can we keep your mouth clean? And we know that from our own patients that we see some common problems, some common challenges that you as a patient might experience. Perhaps you're not brushing long enough, you might be missing some spots, you're brushing too hard. These are all things that we see. And then I just have it here. So the average person brushes for 46 seconds. So if they're using a manual brush, typically that's what that's how long that they're brushing. But when you use the app, I'm going to share that we recommend in our office. Um, again, I'm being the the dentist or the dental hygienist sharing this with our with our patients. This isn't me educating you right now. But you know, we found that our patients who are using the um, the power brush are brushing for two and a half minutes. And if you worry about brushing hard, this power brush helps you to not brush hard. So, you know, it gets that red light that, um, that prevents them from 
from pushing down too hard, um, we find that many of our patients are missing quadrants of, of teeth um, when they're brushing. So now if you have this position detection, it actually reminds you of the areas that you forgot to brush. So it's very intelligent. Um, and that is the brush there. It's the Oral-V Genius and it is the um, uh, uh, position detection. So for all of our patients who, who love the app, like I love my Fitbit app, I look at it every morning to see how did I sleep. And I, as soon as I do my fitness, I make sure it's in there, my water, everything. So I just like to track things and then I can look at my history. So for people who are into apps, they'll love this because then they can look at their history as well. Okay. And you could always ask them, they can even print off their, the PDF of their history for you um, as well. But then here you can just say like, we want you off of manual, right? We want you on power. Um, the brush that we use, it's like the, um, the polisher that we would use when you're seeing us um, because it's round, it has oscillating, rota rotating, it disrupts and sweeps away the bacteria, the biofilm, the oral pathogens, all the things that we talked about. Um, you can just see, your, see here how you're missing when you're using a rectangular brush. Um, and you know, if, if they're not on power, then, you know, by, that's what they're probably using. And so that just makes me even more worried that they're, that they're having this biofilm burden. So here you can see that when you use this type of brush, you're, you're doing tooth to tooth um, and you're doing the best care that you can at home while you're not in our care. And then we have the Cochrane collaboration, which um, you know, confirms that electric brushes with this type. I'm not gonna go through every slide, but you can just see that um, it, it just makes sense, right? It helps with the bleeding, it helps get rid of the, back, the, the, the bacteria um, and all that. So you can go through that and I have notes and everything on what to say on these slides. Um, I'm just trying to wrap it up here in a few minutes. So um, toothpaste matters. So, you know, you can go and buy the 80 cent um, toothpaste that just has um, sodium fluoride or um, so, yeah, sodium fluoride, but that's not what we want you to, to use while you're not in our care and while you are in our care, but we want you on Stannis fluoride, okay? We all know, as now I'm talking to dental professionals, we all know that we learned about Stannis fluoride for when we were in school, but we couldn't use it because it tastes bad, it stained, it, they didn't have the right formula, but now we have the right formula. And so really to get your patients on Stannis fluoride is, is going to help in so many areas. It helps re remineralize the weakened enamel. It puts that micro um, thin protective shield over the enamel so that, you know, people are drinking more and doing more things that they wouldn't normally do on a day-to-day -day activity. So think of that high acid, high acid diet, it's another worry. And then it also inhibits plaque bacteria. So with the, um, with the gum detoxify, this is just here showing, you can talk to them about acidity, um, acidic food and how Stannis is the only fluoride that will really help them in that acidic environment. But you can talk about with gum detoxify, it has that medicinal um, qualities, okay? So we want you on, on the proper paste. Um, you know, this lasts for 12 hours, it goes below your gum line for, you know, four millimeters. And so with all this, you know, this is our way that we can help you while you're not in our care. This is our way to help you have the tools that you need for home, okay? So you have your power brush, you have your rinse, you have all these different heads. Um, there's the interdental aids because you have to clean between your teeth every day. And you know you can try to floss and people aren't comfortable with flossing, we have interdental aids for you. So that's all here. And this is where you tell your patients that we are going to give you our professional discount. So typically, if you were to go buy that package, if I was to send you out and go to Walmart or you know, wherever they would shop, it would be $275 for all that. But we can get it for, say, $108. It depends on where you buy them. Like It depends on our, or the amount that you would get. But this is where you say, we are going to sell this to you for however many dollars. It depends on what province you practice. Some provinces can actually um, make money off a product. Others cannot. I know in Ontario we can't, but you can add a little bit for, um, you know, for storing and for admin. But this is where you say like that is $275. We are going to share a professional discount with you. This is how important it is. And so this is say it's, what day is it today? It's Tuesday. We're going to place this order by next Tuesday. And then you have the date here. 
right? So then you let us know by that date and we will place that order for you, okay? And we will deliver it to you. And then this is the last slide of your presentation that I'm going to give you. So this is where you say, we can't wait to see you. Uh, we're ready here. We are gonna be ready for, for you for when we open. Okay, and that is the last slide. So now I just have a few more slides here. I'll do this really quick. But this is all about caring from home, okay? So um, this is all about you caring for them when they're not in your care. So if you have people, it's like a win-win for people, okay? If they're gonna order that, it's called the Oral Health Essentials Program, and I can share with you how to order that afterwards. But if you are going to um, um, you know, have them on that, and say for people that don't, then even look at your top 20% of patients. And if you have some patients who are on, who are, we're in the middle of, you know, doing a lot of restorative and that, perhaps you want to gift this to them. You want to deliver that to them um, because you want them to be taken care of their mouth so that you can get back to, to work on them when, and make sure that they're healthy. But you can always deliver um, little sample bags. You can buy, you can order the sample and I'll send you the links to, you can order Crest, um, there's two different types of toothpaste samples. You can do little care, um, care packages for them. Um, you can create a YouTube channel where you are educating them and you're guiding your patients there through, through email. This is one we did about caring for your implants. Here's one about brushing your tongue. Here's one, all these different things you can have. You can do live Facebook. Um, everybody should really be promoting oral health on their, on their social media feeds. Um, why not do some one-on-one -on -one calls? Dental hygienists could simply, you know, now that you have the brush, I wanna hop on with you, make sure you're using it. How is everything feeling? Now, versus picking up the phone and saying, you know, how are you doing? We're thinking about you. We have to connect, we have the time. Why not spend a couple of hours a day connecting with our patients, okay? Um, the next one here is my very good friend. This could be another part of your campaign, which is about the Check Your Mouth campaign. Right, so Oral this is another thing one American. that you can add to your campaign. So you're constantly educating. You could put this on your YouTube channel. Um, Servitec Plus, this to me, I, it actually came to me in the middle of the night one night. I was like, oh my gosh, we have to get people on power paste and I wanna get them with the Optrigate um, isolation and I wanna give everybody the chlorhexidine varnish. So can you imagine if we could get all these um, patients taking care of their mouths, being able to paint their own varnish on their teeth. This is an unsung hero, okay? This is the chlorhexidine varnish. It's 1% chlorhexidine diacetate and 1% thymol. So typically, so we can't. So I did check in with Ivoclar and we can't um, because it's the manufacturer's instructions for use is it has to be applied by a dental professional. So we can't say, here you go. Um, but I just wanted you to be aware that this product is here because we would apply this every three months to our patients and it protects them for three months. Okay. So I did contact Ipiclar and um, this is it. So I will send this to you if you're running this down right now, but I can um, send this in my follow. I always do a killer follow-up email. So um, I always look forward to that. And I just feed you with all these extra resources that um, that can help you because we are the easy button. I love being the easy button. And that's what you need to be for your patients. You need to be the easy button for your patients. If they need something, make it there for them. Don't have them go out looking and buying and, and then end up getting the cheap things. If they need you, you be there for them. Always think about how you can be the easy button for your, for your patients, all right? So the recap is basically you're going to set, put together this campaign, connect with your patients, connect with your team. Um, and if you would like the follow-up, um, the follow-up email, um, it goes to, if you go to this web form, www.rdhu.ca forward slash WID, so that's Women in Dentistry, um, I will work on this after um, email and I will send it to you with all the links. I'll send you the PowerPoint um, and anything else that perhaps we talk about over the next 10 minutes, okay? So thank you so much for, um, for being here and for letting me um, take over your screen for the last little bit. Um, let me see, stop share. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so strange just talking to, I know there's like 300 people on here and I'm like, 
Yeah, well, it's, just, uh, I mean, it's, it's a, it takes some getting used to speaking to webinars, but uh, you did great. I think that was a really informative thank you. session. And based I, on, I have, what's that? Oh, no, no, go ahead. No, I have so much to say. So I, um, it's, you try to just narrow it in and. For sure, yeah. for sure. Well, I, I just had a few comments um, from the Q&A and uh, I can say that, you know, you, you raise a lot of really interesting points. Um, I think that for those of you who haven't engaged with your patients, I think it's really important to engage with them. We'll get the responses to our poll um, in a minute if you want. Yeah, to respond I see that. that. Um, yeah, but um, beyond that, I mean, I know personally, I mean, as I said at the outset, for me, I can't do what I do without my staff, without my hygienist, without my uh, yes. assistants and admin people. And we have had communications with our patients. So I just sent out a letter today, uh, a couple of letters, one, to all my patients saying, you know, what I've been up to, just calling to see or just writing to see and check in on them. I think patients really appreciate that. Um, and we also attached with that, I also attached with that letter to my patients, a video that we have, um, it's about a five or maybe even an eight minute video that we take the patient through the journey of what they're going to see when they come back to our office. Perfect, you're doing so, it. Yeah, so if anyone is interested, feel free to DM me um, mm -hmm. on Instagram at Effie Hapsha. I'm happy to send that to you um, because I find that, you know, removing and eliminating the unknown, Kathleen, as you talked about, I think will really eliminate or, or reduce some of the anxiety because a lot of people are extremely anxious during this time. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to try to mitigate that and provide as much information as we can. So we have uh, a, an entire video from the moment they step off the elevator to awesome. when they exit. And including our, our uh, infection control policies, you know, what they'll be asked to wear, whether it's a mask, how we uh, clean or turn around our room. So I think for those of you who haven't done that, I, that would go a long way. Would you uh, not agree, Kathleen? I would, 100%. Yeah, because it's, I think doing video is, is fabulous. And, you know, even when I have booked to certain hotels, and sometimes they'll send me like, this is what this, this is this is a hotel. So it's interesting when you walk in there, it's like, it's almost feels like home because it's not a surprise. Like, oh, where do I go? When they actually send a, a, like a video about what to expect when you get to the hotel, you know, it's just such a great idea. It goes and a long way. It takes away the anxiety for sure. And it shows that you are protecting them and you're protecting your team and your families, right? It's all, and you wouldn't have them there if you didn't feel it was safe for yourself and for your exactly. team and that exactly. message has to come out and for me we get so many emails and it's just a little bit um you know it's, it's just a little bit of a it can be kind of boring so by doing a video and saying come on in i want to walk you through and then they say oh there's dr hapshaw it's so nice mm -hmm. it makes them yeah. remember you and it shows how much you care about them and I think it's also nice to, I mean, I personally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an open book. So I just mentioned, you know, what I've been up to with my kids being at home with virtual school, how it's very chaotic. So it's a nice way to reconnect with your patients because yes. so much of what we do is, is that relationship. We also have our hygienist that sent out an email because we've been on quarantine for so long. Yeah. They don't need to hear from the doctor every week. So we've been sending weekly communications to our patients. Hi. And every time it's a different message. And so we've had our, our hygiene team as well send messages from them talking about the stuff that you had mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, the importance of maintaining oral health and, and how to maintain while you're not able to come into our office. And all those things I think is a really great way for us to remain connected with the with our patients. Um, and I personally have also sent a letter to my referring doctors as well. The right. same thing, I rely on them to keep me busy and so, one showing my gratitude towards them but also informing them of what we're preparing their patients for because you know right. if, if they send me their patients i want them to be abreast of of what we're doing so we had some com some wow. questions here um about uh well did you want to talk about the 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 polls the results from the polls so the question of how many of you have been act um have been actively engaging in communication with your patients only 27 percent Right. So, so I hope that, I think that yeah. after this, you know, <laughs> and it's not too late. I think that, you know, and you can oh. comment about that. It's not too late because we're not going back, I hope, fingers crossed by, yeah. by June, but it's not too late to connect. So I'd like to see this number go up to 100%. What do you think yeah, about that? Yeah, for sure. 
that kind of made me feel because that was what my whole presentation is about. <laughs> so everyone was like, yep, yeah, already doing it. We like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that's really, really important. <laughs> Um, and then how many of you recognize the importance of educating your patients on the oral systemic link during this time? 94% um, awesome. felt that way. And can I just add, like, now's the time. Okay, so we're, we're connecting with our patients, but how about just the public in general, right? We, if we all, you know, spread this message on every which way we can, and so that more and more people are going to learn and they're going to need hygiene. They're going to come to us. Like it, now is a time where we really can um, get those people who aren't even going to the dentist or the dental hygienist to really understand that, you know, you know, overall health starts with the oral health, right? And uh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of um, frustrating when you know we have fought for years as dentists, as hygienists, not fought, but as dentists and hygienists that you know, your oral health is part of your systemic health. You know, yeah. doctors seem to treat from here to here, but just ignore the mouth. And yeah. now that Ontario is saying, you know, dentistry is really not an essential service. I mean, you know, it's a bit, it takes us a few steps back. So yeah. I'm hoping that we continue to engage with our client, with our, with our patients or our clients mm -hmm. um, and emphasize the importance of oral health. I mean, we're still seeing emergencies here and there are people with, you know, dire emergencies. And there was one question about, um, about uh, remote, you know, prescription of medication. So anytime a patient calls in for emergency, we triage them. And if it's something that can be done over the phone, I always speak with my patients. And if it's a, you know, I have their history and if I need to prescribe, whether it's an analgesic or, uh, or an antibiotic, we can do that. That's, that's mm -hmm. definitely something we can do. But if, you know, if needed, we certainly see patients at our office. Fortunately, we have all of our PPE lined up and that's something that the, the video demonstrates as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't stress enough how integral, you know, every team member is um, mm -hmm. hygiene and, and front desk because, you know, you guys are part of the front line. Right. For sure. We have to work together and now's not the time to be disconnected, you know, and, uh, and you have to get everybody on board to want to want to communicate with your patients for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think you've given us a fantastic webinar here, Kathleen. I mean, it's just amazing how much great information you have. Um, you mentioned the link to the handouts in the PowerPoint. We will also have that on our Women in Dentistry um, site. So when we send you your CE certificate, we will have a link to that as well. So Kathleen, we're both we're going to be working together. We're going to have more initiatives, more programs together. So I think by all means, we're always stronger together. And that's always been my motto. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank I, I you. Thanks again it. for inviting me and thank you for joining us. I really enjoyed that. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So now I just want to highlight a few of the upcoming programs that we have. So as I mentioned at the outset of our program um, of the, the webinar today, um, we have been putting on webinars from the beginning. So since March, I think March 31st, we've had one webinar a week. Um, next week, we have uh, Peter Berry, who's going to talk about Revive and Thrive, a new playbook for your empowered practice resurgence. So um, a different perspective on stuff that you know you offered. So I think that will be an excellent lecture. And then I'm going to finish off my, my uh, our, what I call our pandemic um, webinar series by talking about um, navigating the maze of new materials and tech and materials and technology. So I'm going to talk about various uh, ceramic materials, all ceramic materials, um, how to cement or how to bond. So I think this is a very relevant topic because we're constantly inundated with new materials and uh, dentists and staff may not know what materials to use in which situation. So I think this would be a great lecture, not only for the dentist, but for the hygienist as well as our assistant. So spread the word. Um, that's on May the 28th and it's about an hour and a half because there's a lot of material to cover. And beyond that, we are, as a team, as women in dentistry, going to be providing uh, webinars probably on a monthly basis, but, but this will sort of wrap up our you know, two and a half month uh, webinar series. Again, if I can encourage you or welcome you to um, follow us on Instagram at Women's Dentistry. Uh, of course, Kathleen, her RDHU site and my site, um, Women in Dentistry. I think that it would, uh, sorry, at Effie Hapsha, it would be really great to see you guys um, and connect on online. So with that, I'd like to, again, thank you, Kathleen. Um, and if there are more questions, we will gladly answer them um, offline after that. So feel free to connect with us. Feel free to connect with me, with Kathleen, and we wish you good health. 
and um, and we'll see you next week. Take care, Kathleen. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.